It's a chill wind out there today. I'll pop a brew on in a minute. <laughs> For months, the papers have been filled with lists of the dead, wounded, and missing from the Somme. I heard Mrs. Taylor down the roads lost her assignment. It's another son. Oh, poor woman will be inconsolable. I should call in on her later today, see how she's coping. <laughs> you know, the day my brother Arthur's name appeared in the paper as wounded in action. I must have sat in this kitchen for hours, just staring at these bars. It was filled with purple foxgloves. I remember thinking they seemed too radiant for this world. He was treating a casualty when a mine exploded. Two of his friends raced over and managed to drag him back to the trench. They said a German sentry could have easily shot them, but chose not to. I'm sure in the years to come, he will often find himself wondering what became of that young German soldier. I know I will. We feel blessed to have him recovering at home and the injury to his leg means he won't be sent back. Thank goodness. But between you and me, he's had trouble adjusting and I'm concerned for him. He's... Um, He's withdrawn. He doesn't sleep. I've really tried to reach out to him, though with little success. You know, our Arthur, he's always been a quiet and thoughtful man, and I fear he saw some hideous things over there. He was a stretcher bearer. I know he risked his life rescuing the wounded, ferrying them from the trenches to the hospitals behind the front line, but apart from that, I know very little. He's sitting out in the garden there. I've just been up to tidy his room, and as I was making up his bed, I came across this. It's his war diary. Look, I don't believe it was left there by accident. Hey, look, I know I shouldn't, but what if this is Arthur's way of trying to open up to us? Oh, you know, it would just be so like my brother to do things the awkward way. March the 11th, 1916. Had my first taste of gas. I was looking out the dugout when a runner came rushing in and gave the alarm. Panic ensued as we adjusted our gas helmets. One of our lads was too slow, and within seconds he fell to the ground, clawing at his face. It was a terrible sight, a very narrow escape for the rest of us. April 22nd. This morning we came under heavy artillery fire. Our communication trench was blown in and there were piles of dead men buried under the dirt. We had to scramble over the poor fellows with our stretchers to get to the wounded. We came across this one lad who'd been badly hit, but before we could get him to the dressing station, he went west.
May 16th. Roll call has become a rather feeble ceremony. We're quite accustomed nowadays to a name being called and the silence that follows. This appears to be his last entry. June 18th. We are at a rest camp between stints in the trenches. It is a glorious sunny day. The weather that brings out your thoughts. I'm lying in a field thinking of loved ones back home. But my bliss is broken as I wonder if I will ever lay eyes on them again. Tomorrow we go back to the trenches. I pray God I find the courage to perform my duties, whatever they entail. <sighs> well, when our Arthur's ready, we'll be here for him. And not just us, the whole community will rally around our heroes. And in time, I feel certain that the brother I knew will return from France. Sorry. I shouldn't be talking like this with you. I better put this back before he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> 